The Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network presents Worldview Media Podcast, where Gordon and Joyce Runyon view popular media through the lens of the biblical five-point covenant model to help believers appreciate and apply principles of exciting narrative and engaging storytelling. Hello, welcome to Worldview Media Podcast. We are here as your... uh worldview media sherpas <laughs> guiding <laughs> guiding you through the strange worlds mm. i'm afraid today we have uh well a bad movie <laughs> to review where did this movie come from how did how did we pick this thing well you know we try to expand our <laughs> genres and stuff and and it just seemed like time to do a romantic comedy and uh this one was available on netflix is what it amounts to (laughs) (laughs) and let's see not that netflix has bad movies (laughs) well netflix doesn't have a (laughs) they don't have a whole lot of good movies That's, that's true i'm your host gordon runyon and with me are three ladies who love feeding penguins at the park uh, <laughs> my wife Joyce is here with me in the studio. Hello. And from her beachfront beachfront property in Orlando, Florida, is Carmen. Hello. Hi. And I'm at the beach. right, and from her uh, her placard spot at the university library is our middle daughter Jordan. Hello, Jordan. Hi. <laughs> well, you sound very enthusiastic. Good to have you all with us today. <laughs> well, let's just say that uh, let's just say it up front. This is really not a good movie, and uh, I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> to anybody. Really, uh, it's billed as a comedy. There are some parts that are kind of funny, but generally it's the sort of humor that you expect to find in a high school football locker room and it doesn't really get more sophisticated than that most of the time you haven't said what the movie is yet oh yeah the movie is uh adam sandler's 51st dates where she starred he starred with drew barrymore and rob schneider had a supporting role and in this movie, if you haven't had the pleasure of seeing it, uh, Adam Sandler plays a man in Hawaii named Henry, and he works at basically SeaWorld. He's a marine veterinarian. That doesn't play much role in the movie, except that it he's in a position to deal with lots of tourists, and he's a big womanizer. Mm-hmm. And suddenly one day at a cafe, he experiences love at first sight with Drew Barrymore's character. Now, the thing about her is we find out eventually she was in a car accident a year ago that has left her with this brain condition that they call Goldfield Syndrome. And what that does is it makes it so that she can't access her short-term memory. And so she... Specifically, her case, she goes to bed at night and then forgets everything that happened in the last day. And what this leaves her with is she doesn't remember anything before the accident, or mean after the accident. Yeah. And so she's continually reliving the day of her accident. Well, she's doing that because that's how her family has set that up for her. Oh, right, right. Yeah, well, she's waking up, though, thinking that one day should pass normally into the next. But it's the same day for everybody around her. Right. And I was just thinking, in in that, this movie has some similarity to Bill Murray's movie, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. And that's actually, it's been a while since I saw that, but my... My long-term memory tells me that (laughs) Groundhog Day is probably a better version of this sort of thing. And so anyway, a lot of the reason I'm panning this movie is just the juvenile locker room nature of the humor. It 
it's very lowbrow and uh, it was just kind of disgusting that way. Yeah, there were some questionable scenes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Locker room humor at its finest. Uh, I don't know how anybody gets rich doing that, but apparently, apparently it works. Okay, any other? I've talked a lot about it. What, does somebody else give me your overall impression? I mean, it's, I'll watch it if it's on, but, you know, it's an Adam Sandler movie. Right. Okay, that's a... <laughs> Ringing endorsement. Yeah, that's a keen observation there. <laughs> All right, uh, any other... Carmen, you have anything? Um, I actually think it's kind of a cute story. I think the execution needs some work. Yeah, there were some, there were some places where it's actually kind of funny. Rob Schneider's character, I think, is is kind of funny. He got, as I was doing research, I figured I found out that he took a lot of heat for supposedly being. It's a supposedly a racial stereotype. <laughs> He's playing this native Hawaiian and. Uh, they darkened his skin and everything like they did with Robert Downey Jr. in that Thunder in the Jungle or Jung, <laughs> whatever that stupid movie was. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, I don't think that's the yeah. name. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Rumble in the Jungle or something. something. Tropic. Tropic Thunder, or was that? Tropic something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thunder in the Jungle was like a pay-per-view wrestling <laughs> thing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't think it was racist though because there were other native Hawaiians pictured in the film that were really cast in a very good light the owners of the cafe that figures prominently they're great friends and very loyal and protective and generous and yeah so I I don't know can you not make fun of any minorities at all ever even if you're not making fun of the color of their skin or something like that it, I mean, if they're, you can have a white idiot, but you can't have a idiot with some other color skin. It is automatically racist. Is I don't know. That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Well, I think I would disagree with you that he fell in love with her at first sight. I think his interest was piqued, and he tried to go a little bit farther with that. And actually, when he found out she was a native on the island he was like oh no I can't have one of these because his whole deal was these were visiting ladies that were coming in they were staying for short amounts of time they would leave and um, there were ever there were no strings no consequences you know everybody had to go back to their real life so um, I don't think he really wanted something more with this girl but he was intrigued by her okay well yeah all right I get that it's a real simple movie and some of the humor is a little too simple, but I think it's got some um, some nice concepts going in there about what what love is, yeah, and what love isn't, and how do you um, how do you decide these things? Right. Well, I think we'll get into that in just a little bit. So uh, that's kind of our overall impression. It sounds like I'm probably more down on it. I don't think Jordan likes Adam Sandler movies either, but <laughs> uh, I certainly, I wouldn't recommend it. But it does, like Mom says, it does have some interesting things to say or suggest about love. And we'll talk about that after this break. Our word from ReconstructionistRadio.com. Here's Jason Sanchez. The Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network brings to you a complete lineup of podcasts, where you will hear practical and tactical theology. Our desire is not simply that you consume our shows, but that you also live out your faith in every area of life. We can talk all day long about these things, but if we fail to put them into practice, then we fail as ambassadors of Jesus Christ our King. Subscribe now to your favorite Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network shows, or you can subscribe to the Reconstructionist Radio Master Feed, 
where all of the content we produce, including the audiobooks and audio articles, will pop up as soon as they are available. And don't forget to visit reconstructionistradio.com to volunteer as a narrator or to partner with this ministry financially. May the Holy Spirit stir you into action for Christ and His kingdom. All right, we're back, and it's time for us to work through this movie in terms of the five-point biblical covenant. 51st dates. Anybody have any ideas on the topic of transcendence? As I was watching it, I didn't think there was much to see there. Uh, it seems to assume kind of a secularist worldview. It doesn't state it outright, but that seems yeah. to be assumed. Uh, it's really loose. I mean, it's what you think is right for the time, and then you should just do that, and hey, it's all good. Right. <laughs> you know? So no consequences, nobody really having to think anything out. It's just like that Nike, just do it. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Whatever, just do it. Well, well, even the way that they handled, um, like, her problem kind of goes with that, you know, that um, her, their initial way of dealing with this is that they have her relive the same day over and over again, you know, and then when Adam Sandler's character comes up with the idea of let's make her tape so she can get caught up with what's happening, you know, their, his explanation for it is like, if it doesn't work, you know, we just lost the day. It doesn't hurt anything. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And then... The thing that I had noticed, though, was like, it is kind of interesting that she does end up like dreaming about him, even though she's not supposed to be able to remember anything and all this stuff at the end. Okay. So it's kind of this idea that, like, maybe love is, is stronger than her medical condition or okay. something. Okay. Yeah, very good. I, I think I was going to suggest that, too, that a lot of modern romantic comedies and romantic movies seem to kind of put romantic love in the top spot, like it's the highest ideal, and and it justifies everything that's done for the sake of it. So uh, maybe romantic love itself is the closest thing we get to transcendence in the mm. movie. Does that make sense? Yeah, I could see that. It's a, it's a stretch, but... Well, <laughs> but you know, uh, the whole thing's kind of a stretch, so I'll go with that. <laughs> and since that's true, I kind of think that when we get to point two, we're talking about representation, and I kind of feel like most of the characters were representatives one way or the other. They kind of all had that maybe same idea, but mostly Adam Sandler. I would I would put that. He's probably, his character was probably the, the closest thing to a representative of that. Yeah, I just didn't know you were done with your sentence. <laughs> oh, right, right. That's okay. <laughs> All well, right. well, that's a little surprising because to me, you would think that her family would kind of be that that force in, in the movie and in her life. And they I think they took an easy way out. You know, it was just easier to maybe drudgingly and not as much fun but you know they just chose we'll just do this day over and over and over and over until yeah. until something happens she gets old and looks in the mirror or she looks at me and doesn't know who I am right <laughs> so okay so we we should explain that for those that are listening Drew Barrymore's character has an uh, adult brother and a father and They've decided that the way they're going to deal with her syndrome is that they're going to recreate the day every day. And this involves things like repainting a room every single night after she goes to bed. and Refilling a, a shampoo bottle. Uh, yeah. Putting up the same newspaper. Rewrapping the same presents. And, uh, yeah, printing off copies of an old newspaper and storing them around and and it really, from the looks of it, it leaves them with no life other than that. And every day is exactly the routine and all that. Okay, and this leads us then into point three. We're talking about ethics. And I think 
you know, generally we ask about moral crises and, and how characters deal with, with these questions of morality and ethics and what's right. And I think the whole movie was kind of about that. And her family, their option is the one I just described. We're basically going to deceive this girl every day in order to make sure that she just has a good day and is not upset about anything. And she's not going to know the difference from one day to the other. And if we can hide her injury from her, it, she'll be spared that trauma for that day. Right. And so they kind of justify deceiving her the entire time. And, and like I say, kind of wasting their own lives for that. Any thoughts? No, I think that's right. I mean, I think the options between the, the moral crisis, I think, or the ethical crisis is kind of shown in this movie is um, kind of temporary happiness versus, like, lasting happiness, I guess. Okay. You know that, um, you know, uh, there's this one point in the movie where she finds out in the middle of the day that, you know, she's had this terrible accident and it's not the day that she thinks it is. You know, and she kind of she kind of falls apart and all this, and um, you know, so even their even their uh, charade isn't good enough to work all the time. You know, and they're like, oh, it's a bad day, you know, and stuff like that. And they have you know measures that they take. Whereas, like uh, Adam Sandler's method is trying to give her the option of you know moving on with her life, and you know it takes like an hour in the morning for her to kind of process everything, and then. She can go and do other stuff and, like, go and meet her friends that she hasn't seen in forever and catch up and kind of proceed with her life in a little bit, you know? Yeah. But it's the question whether that that pain and the trauma of it is worth that kind of opportunity. Right, and is it right to just go on subjecting her to that trauma every day? And, but then mm -hmm. that's that's ameliorated by the fact that she doesn't remember the trauma from day to day. And for her, it's yeah. the first time that she's dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Well, even in with Adam Sandler's, um, the way he approached the problem was that, you know, well, I'll just be honest with you. And so her response is, you know, I'm going to write down what's happened today so that when I see this video tomorrow, I'm going to go to my book and I'm going to look at it <laughs> and make sure that these people aren't telling me stories because it'll be in her own writing and she may not remember what happened, but she'll know that she had written it. Yeah. And so I think that was a good um, adjustment on her part to try to, to move forward as well. All right. Well, while we're talking about this, this is a good time for me to break in and ask a trivia question. They called this thing Goldfield Syndrome that she has. What's your guess? Factual or fictional Goldfield Syndrome that she has? I will go factual. All right, Mom says factual. And Jordan says factual. Carmen? She's checking. I'm going to go fiction. Fiction. Yeah, it's going to be contrary. Okay, well, the name of it is apparently total fiction, but there is actually a con condition called anterograde amnesia, according to a blog at psychologytoday.com. And it really can basically do what the movie shows it doing to her. Uh, the psychologist that was talking about it was saying the theory is that you really are building these short-term memories. It's it's just that the damage to your brain is in your ability to access those memories. And so yeah. even at the end of the movie where she starts dreaming about him and painting his face, that's plausible. a possibility. Yeah. That would seem plausible with that type that of That she's accessing this other short-term memory while she's asleep and kind of through a different pathway in the brain or something like that. So... And it, there's this funny character in the movie called uh, Ten Second Tom. <laughs> yeah. Where he only remembers things for ten seconds at a time. Well, this article I was reading in Psychology Today mentioned, uh, I believe it was a guy, and his short-term memory was only seven seconds long. And, oh, man. Oh, boy. Yeah, but it wasn't quite as airtight 
as 10 second Tom, because you could actually like sit down and interview him about how has this condition affected your life and, and stuff like that. And he could answer intelligently. So there was a lot of, a lot of short term memory that he had lost, but somehow still had some access. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. I was, I was kind of watching the movie the whole time thinking, well, this is ridiculous. This, this can't <laughs> happen. And, uh, turns out apparently it, it can if the article I was reading was correct, and uh, then uh, then they were saying that most everybody that has this condition winds up being hospitalized because of you know just what we saw with the family in the show. They wind up devoting their whole lives to taking care uh, of her, yeah, and right. it, and it just becomes and too hard. Going to the clinic for a while too. Right. Yeah. Just because she recognized that their lives were being spent on this. Yeah. So, ethically, morally, I think Sandler's character, if we had to deal with a situation like that, I think Sandler's character obviously had it right that you want to go with the truth instead of. Go with the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, imagine that. So, <laughs> that would be a new thing for our family, but that's what we would have to do. <laughs> no, that's not the truth. <laughs> right. uh, I'll, uh, I'll speak to your father in private. <laughs> <laughs> it's all built on lies around here. <laughs> Sorry, children. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you jumped the shark with that one, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, so we need to move on. Let's move right along. <laughs> Drive on. Point four of the biblical covenant is about sanctions, and we ask the question about what do our characters get for their ethical actions? And so, did y'all have anything about that? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, his choice to you know kind of give her 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 life back. You know, he ends up you know they end up getting married and having a kid and everything together. So. But his his desire to help her move forward with his life, or her life, ends up helping him move forward with his life, and then they, they go and achieve his dream of studying walruses and stuff like that. Right, the big Alaska trip. Uh -huh. Okay. And that was really kind of a sweet scene right there at the end where she wakes up on the, on the sailboat and then... You know, the, the morning, finding out about the accident and all that. And then she goes out on deck and finds out not only there's her husband, but here's this daughter that she doesn't even remember because she went to sleep. And so having, being reunited with her daughter and stuff, that was that was kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Well, I just basically had the same idea that Carmen did, that, like, you know, she made this commitment to her to try and help her and, and you know even when she wouldn't she didn't want him to waste his life on her or something because she can't always remember him and stuff but but he stuck through it and then he ends up you know getting getting it all basically yeah right well I kind of wondered about that it just occurs to me that in that arrangement that they showed, their marriage is never going to be anything more than a day long. You know? Sometimes that's good. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> 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 right. Yeah, kids, we have things to explain. <laughs> no, but, but you kind of know what I mean, though, right? Uh, they're never going to their capacity to learn and grow as a couple and to really take on growth from experiences, that's going to be severely limited, you know? And, and one of the things that makes a marriage strong is when you 
wind up sticking with it through some maybe extended periods of of badness where it's not very fun and and all of that so that was just my thought that initially it looks like everything's turned out well but it just occurs to me this is never going to be anything other than a, a really pretty shallow relationship and uh yeah, so, at, so, least, at least from her side of it right right that's right but you know uh, mom well, kind of things and she at least knows sort of what has happened yeah yeah there's some of that she'll just have to spend more and more time reading every morning and uh-huh. but i'm just not sure if that's really a substitute for really having to live through stuff and does she write herself a note when the guy's been a jerk at the end of the day, does she yeah. write herself a note yeah. and say, Be mad at him tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you have to be mad at him. He's not going to tell you he did these bad things, but you have to be mad at him when you wake up today. Yeah, I bet she would do that. <laughs> <laughs> she seems like the type. <laughs> right. <laughs> if she's like any woman I've ever met, <laughs> she would probably do that. <laughs> Uh, oh, this movie's just not doing well for your father. <laughs> yeah, your mom's. That's why he didn't like it. Yeah, your mom's over here writing a bunch of stuff down. <laughs> oh, I'll remember. <laughs> no syndrome here. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. All right. Uh, well, but I think that there's really a lot of commitment on his part because uh-huh. he stays with her, even though this is really the ideal situation for him, that he can be with this same girl day after day after day and she will never remember him. And if he decides not to be there the next day, she won't even know that he was there the previous day. So, so uh-huh. really this is his, you know, the sweet spot for him because that's what he's kind of doing with all these other ladies. But... He, he falls in love with her, and so he can't, he doesn't want to lose that. Even though it's this yeah. weird type of thing for him, he really does love her. And I think in the movie, he doesn't even recognize that until she's kind of filming him, and she just says, do you love me? Mm-hmm. And he looked like, uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. And right. then he just started talking about, this right. is what I do every day. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's... Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I I was just thinking that that seems, uh, you know, kind of kind of sad that you know that here's this girl that he's obviously done so much for, and he, you know, he worked so hard for her to try and make every day, you know, something special. Because from what we saw, he never repeated any of their dates, you know, so he never did anything the exact same way for her, and you know that he loves her so much, and she she just kind of teases him about it, like, oh, you love me. And Yes, he loves you, you know, but she's never going to really completely understand how much. And and that's that's actually not a bad message that they had about that idea of commitment uh-huh. and and today you need to decide that you're going to love your spouse and and all that. And so it's a, uh-huh. a you know that was a good thing that was communicated about daily commitment and. Uh, I like that. The loyalty involved. I thought that was a good message. Yeah. All right. So since it's a comedy, oh, we should talk about we should talk about the fifth point succession. I'm not sure there's much to say there, but you can just kind of wonder about the daughter that they have and and what her life is gonna be like, what her relationship with her mom is gonna be like, and. You can imagine that's probably going to be really rough to deal with at times. Yeah. You know, for me, that's kind of, it won't be easy, but that's going to be the only parent that she's ever known. And so in some of that, that's going to be normal for her in a way. And so, you know, so long as she's got her dad there, who's also guiding her through this relationship with her mom and their family dynamics, you know, she's got other people that do know her, her um, grandpa, the uncle, these other people. And so there's going to be that stability for her. And I think that's just going to help her relationship with her mom. But that's going to be the only relationship she knows. 
I agree. Any other thoughts on succession? Anybody have anything? No, I guess not. I mean, it seems like they've made it work for a number of years, so I guess it'll be fun for the next number, too. <laughs> right, that could be. No, well, just that, uh, that when we meet their daughter and everything, she's not like a little baby. Like, she's probably a couple, yeah, maybe like five. a year. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's... she's a few years old, so that's not just something that, like, like, oh, they got married, like, within so however many long, and then they have a kid right away. Like, this is something that they've been doing for a while that, you know, obviously been successful at some point. You know, I think when we were talking about the movie and the way that the, the her family had tried to protect her by making everything be as close to perfect as they could, um, I think sometimes we go into our lives and we think that that, is a good thing and that's what we want and we want our lives to be as perfect as they possibly can and as smooth and as easy but the reality that's not it that's not the reality and so we always have these difficult times and these hard times and it's not it's someone that'll love us through those things and not just kind of gloss it over and say well I'll make this as good as I can so that it's just like the day before and you'll never know anything different right. so all right. Well, we don't have much time left, but anybody have a favorite funny scene that you want to talk about? My, I'll start off. My favorite scene was when he tricked her into stopping by by having Rob Schneider's character act like he was act like he was assaulting him on the side of the road, and then she jumps out. She jumps out with her baseball bat and, and beats the livid snot out of him and chases him down through the pineapple fields and all that. That was that was really funny. I really like 10 Second Tom. And I like those guys at the, at the, at the uh, mental place where she's teaching her art class and the one guy, you know, kind of keeps forgetting stuff and the other guy's like castling him and he's all like, and then Henry comes in, and, and, and they have a little moment, but then they leave, and so the students are, like, wait, left there, and the one guy looks over at the other guy, and he's like, do you know who that guy is? And then he's just like, I don't even know who I am. <laughs> and he tells him, well, you're Pablo Picasso. Really? No. <laughs> Carmen, what's um, your favorite? I, my favorite part. Um, I like the part with the penguin, where he has the penguin out on the road, and he's trying to get her to stop, and she doesn't see the penguin and drives over him, and the penguin's freaking out, and Aaron Taylor's <laughs> freaking out. And... Yeah. That montage of how he was trying to get her to stop had its moments. Well, that's because he promised yeah. he wouldn't go to the restaurant <laughs> anymore. Right, right. Yeah. But... The, Left the rest yeah, of the I island open. Thing is really funny too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And at the end, when he's singing to the Beach Boys and and crying yeah. while he's singing, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would guess my favorite scene is the very end when she's hugging her little girl, and all she can say is, "Oh my goodness." Yeah, that was sweet. All right, I think that takes us to the end. Here we are. We made it through the worst movie that we've. <laughs> reviewed so far we have plenty to talk about uh, well yeah i mean that's because of us <laughs> <laughs> and dad's secrets <laughs> oh boy we're gonna say <laughs> yeah f family meeting right after this <laughs> no <laughs> Okay, well, we did make it through. It was a good talk. It was interesting talking to y'all. Uh, why do we even do this? Why do we care? Well, because the truth of the matter is that even in bad media, even in bad movies and TV shows, some kind of worldview is being preached. And it's important for us to be able to spot those things. And why? Not just so that we can spot those things, but so that we as Christian people learn how to preach our worldview through popular media as well and so that's what we're here for to hopefully be an inspiration to creative christians and uh, let's go take dominion in these things so until next week we're done say goodbye y'all
Bye, y'all. God bless you. Go serve Jesus in the media. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Worldview Media Podcast. Please visit reconstructionistradio.com to check out the other podcasts in our network and to download our free audiobooks.